we're going to use a mass balance to help us describe the relationship between this inlet flow rate and uh, the height right there in the tank. So we want to be able to predict the height um, and we have a sealed tank. Um, so it's sealed and as the volume uh, increases, as, it, as this liquid level goes down, uh, the pressure is going to uh, decrease as the volume of the gas increases. Okay, so as this liquid level goes down, the outlet flow rate is going to slow down as well. Okay, so we have a couple things about this. We have a non-condensable gas above the liquid. It might be something like inert, like nitrogen. Uh, we want to derive this unsteady state uh, model relating this uh, liquid level uh, H to the input flow rate QI. So is the operation of the system independent of the ambient pressure PA? What about for a system open to the atmosphere? Okay, where PA equals PG. Okay, so we can make a couple assumptions here. Uh, let's go first of all with these. The uh, gas obeys the ideal gas law. Now that's going to be good for uh, generally for anything under 20 bar um, and uh, so as long as we're not compressing it a lot it, it should be a good assumption and then a constant amount of uh, mass or, or uh, and, and also moles of gas are present in the tank and the operation is iso also isothermal so uh, temperature is constant okay that's going to be important uh, for the ideal gas law and then you have a square root relation holds for the flow uh, through the valve okay so you have uh, the pressure drop across the valve over specific gravity okay is going to be uh, the flow and we typically have like a CV and then a lift here but we're not going to be adjusting that so we're just going to you know maybe lump this um, back into here, just assume that uh, that will be absorbed into that constant CV. So we have the flow rate is going to be proportional to the square root of the pressure drop across the valve. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start with a, uh, we have our schematic here, that's one of the first things we want to do with uh, any problem is just draw, draw the system. Okay, and then what we want to do is figure out is this a spatially distributed, if it is you have to write uh, PD, a partial differential equation. If not, you can uh, typically do an ODE type equation. We're going to assume that this is, uh, you know, constant throughout. We only need an ODE, which is going to be a mass, uh, a mass balance. So we have the mass with respect to time is going to be the mass flow rate in minus the mass flow rate out. And we have our control volume right here. So we have this is going to be an inlet uh, stream and then we also have just one outlet stream. It's going to be closed otherwise. Okay, so the mass uh, within this is going to be a combination of the mass of the gas and then also the mass of the liquid. Okay, so we have a, um, a mass of the gas plus mass of the liquid, D time. Okay, the mass of the gas is not going to change. And then uh, let's just assume constant density on the liquid. Okay, so we have uh, rho times Q in minus rho times Q uh, out, which is just Q. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit further now. We have the mass of the gas. Okay, so that is going to be, um, I'll just leave that as mg for now okay and then uh, we have the mass of the liquid which is going to be rho um, a times h so that's going to be the volume uh, right here this is our volume times the density plus the uh, mass of our gas okay and that's going to be with respect to time and uh, if I just um, divide out the uh, the density okay and, and if I okay so first of all I can um, let me do one other thing here I have density times Q in minus uh, Q okay so um, I'm gonna break this one up 
right here into two separate parts. Okay, and this is going to be constant. It's not going to change with time. And then uh, this density is going to be constant as well. So that's going to cancel with this density right here. And let's just say the area of our tank is constant as well. So what we have now is an area times dh dt equals q in minus q. Okay, so um, let's just get the q out value now. So this value right here, we had a square root relationship for flow uh, through the valve. Um, but we ha don't really know our pressure drop here. So let's just go ahead and um, calculate that. We're going to have uh, the pressure of the gas. This is our, uh, you know, kind of our starting point. And then we're going to have also our uh, pressure increase due to the height of this liquid. So that's going to be rho times the gravitational constant g times the height h uh, divided by the uh, uh, gc there. Um, and then we have um, also the atmospheric pressure right here. So the, the difference between this point and uh, this point up here is going to be, you know, delta P across the valve is going to be uh, PG plus rho G H over G C um, minus P A. And this value, it, we're going to plug that into our valve equation uh, right over there. Okay, so we have um, the Q out then that's going to be our CV. We'll just leave off our F of L. That one's just going to stay constant. I'll just lump that back into the uh, CV value. That'll just be a constant. And then we're going to have PG, the pressure of the gas, plus rho GH uh, divided by GC minus uh, PA. And then we'll just take the uh, square root of, of that. Okay, and then we also had, um, remember if, if you remember, we also had the specific gravity here. We'll also just, for this purpose, we'll just lump it into the CV as well. That's just going to be constant. Okay, so um, here I go. I've got uh, my Q value. Now, my pressure of my gas, uh, I'm going to use the ideal gas law to come up with that. The ideal gas law is PV equals nRT um, and the volume of the gas okay I'm going to put that here in the denominator um, I have my volume of my gas and then my pressure of my gas um, the volume is going to be related to the height as well as the liquid level starts dropping um, then this pressure is going to go down right there so uh, let's go ahead and just create a relationship here we had a constant mass of our gas and then we divide that by the molecular weight of our gas um, and then we have R times T that's isothermal so that temperature is constant and then um, we had the area times um, let's see so this is going to be the height right there this is the height in the tank and then we had the lowercase h. So, so this distance right here is going to be h minus h. Okay, so we have an area right there times h minus h. That's going to be the volume of the gas. Okay, so we have a times h minus h. Okay, so we're almost done. We had you know this we have to plug in here this that we have to plug into our our mass balance let's just go ahead and put all of those uh, together and so we have a times uh, dh dt equals a q in minus and then our q out and then i have my gas mg over the molecular weight of my gas times r t divided by a h minus h 
Okay, plus rho g h over g c uh, minus p a to the one half. Okay, so here's my expression of how in the in the end we wanted to get um, how the inlet flow rate relates to the height. So here's height, um, here's the height, and here's the height right there. And then one other question that we had is. Um, you know, if the pressure of the gas is equal to, um, it, you know, if it's if it's open, then is are we going to be affected by the atmospheric pressure? Okay, so here's the other question: What about for a system open to the atmosphere? So let's just go back down to our balance equation here, and if uh, Pg equals Pa then this term is going to cancel with this term right here and we're no longer going to have a dependence of the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so there will be no dependence if it's open uh, to the atmosphere based on the atmospheric pressure.